It's festival season, and for many Brits, that means one thing, party time. Over the weekend, a mishmash of old school ravers and glittering crested 20-somethings got lost for three days in the surreal and bizarre world of Boomtown Fair, where anything goes and normality is a distant concept. And down this hill, the escape from reality continues because in that tent down there, they're doing drug testing. And we're not talking the testing of drugs that have been confiscated by the police, but festival goers, with the acceptance of the police and festival organisers, can take the drugs that they've smuggled in to get them tested to find out if they are what they think they are. It's one of four UK festivals this year where The Loop, a not-for-profit drug testing service, is setting up stall in a break from the usual, it doesn't happen here attitude. So Henry, tell me what happens. People come in here with their drugs. So they'll come in here and they'll come to our sample drop desk first. Uh, so here we will give them a little bag and they can put a sample of what they have uh, in here. So either a little scoop of white powder or either a bit of a pill or ideally a whole pill. Um, if they give us a whole pill then we can test uh, how strong it is. If they only give us a bit then we can't do that. And how often is what you test what the person thinks it was? And we find all sorts of missold drugs. So we've, we've had paracetamol, we've had sugar being sold as ketamine, uh, we've had anti-malarial anti drugs, uh, we've had pills made 100% concrete, uh, we've had plaster of Paris. Uh, yeah, all sorts of things that you wouldn't really want to be putting inside yourself. After 20 minutes filming in their makeshift lab, they find what they think is crushed up anti-malarial tablets masquerading as the Class A drug ketamine and a menacing adaptation of the former legal high, now Class B drug, mephedrone. When mephedrone was banned, Chinese chemists experimented and came up with something that would circumvent the legality of mephedrone. Uh, Fulchloroethacanone is an even more toxic, even more dangerous version of mephedrone, and in this case it's been cut with caffeine, which would make it substantially more dangerous for the user. What would happen if they took that drug? It's hard to say exactly. Uh, it would depend on their medical history. For example, if they had existing heart problems, they would almost certainly end up in hospital. Drug-induced deaths in the UK are three times higher than that on the continent, so some say the service has never been more needed. But not everyone is convinced. There are some people that will say that offering a service like this legitimises drug-taking. What would you say to that? Well, we're very clear that we're not encouraging or condoning drug use. Uh, and in fact, our initial results suggest that when people see us, actually they go out and either take less of the drugs or for a small number, between 1 in 5 and 1 in 10, they ask us to dispose of their drugs so that we're taking drugs out of circulation. We're also very mindful that we don't want to be seen to be in any way um, encouraging or condoning drug dealers or providing a service that's a quality assurance of the illegal market. Drug testing at festivals comes in the wake of a spate of drug-related deaths at various music events recently. Boomtown itself has had four fatalities in the last six years. I'm standing here because Eleanor wanted to come to Boomtown and I just want to raise awareness. One of those was Ellie Rowe, an 18-year-old who was found unconscious in her tent after mixing alcohol and ketamine. The unlikeliness of her death due to what she'd taken. Her mum Wendy and sister Iona came to the festival for the second year running to remember her. The amounts that she'd taken wasn't, relatively wasn't a risk and it was better as the double depression it was purely the levels in her body at the time and he said it was like she'd forgotten to breathe and she'd led back on her back and that was how her cardiac arrest started. I was sitting by the fire and the police car came in the gate and he made me sit down and he told me and you know everything changed. Everything changed. And that's it. But we were we were really just like the other half of my mind <laughs> and my soul and yeah she was um, so you were so close we're all close we're really to her close. do you think parents are aware of people go to festivals do you think that there's enough awareness and enough dialogue around young people and drugs i think they know it happens but it's not their child yes that's what i think because we've had and it's always their child yes <laughs> uh, yes you know. well it's my well, child yeah. it's my the thing is people would say to me Oh no, I don't worry about my child because I know I, they're far too sensible to take it. But, uh, know, well, Eleanor was the most sensible person. Daddy. So I think parents are deluded. 
60,000 people went to this year's festival and over a thousand different samples of drugs were tested, the highest number of any festival The Loop has worked at. Personally, I don't do drugs, but to be able to have the opportunity to go, what have I actually got? And somebody can tell you how strong it is or if it's got other things cut with it, means that people can make a lot more informed decisions if they're going to take whatever they're taking. So is this something you'd like to see brought in kind of more broadly across the UK? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Because people are going to take drugs regardless, so I think it'd be a better idea to test it and give people peace of mind before they take the drugs. Yeah. Personally speaking, I don't take any drugs, but maybe in the past I did, so... When you're at the campsite, you have a lot of people coming up and like sometimes offering you drugs, and I'm not really interested in that, but I'm pretty sure that what they're selling isn't what they say they're selling, and I'm worried that people could you know, pick up stuff that they don't know what it is. Boomtown festivals still try to stop the drugs coming in, but concede they aren't able to keep them all out. Drugs do get in, they can't stop them getting into prisons. As best we try, we can't stop them getting into festivals. So what we really wanted to do was actually re taking a very a much more responsible, pragmatic and a much more kind of open and honest approach to it because people do take drugs. They don't just take drugs at music festivals, they don't just take them at nightclubs, they take them at city centres, at home. It's, it's, a, it's a big issue in society. So, with recent figures showing deaths from drugs increasing here and little change to the amount of illegal substances consumed in England and Wales, is it time that more parts of society move towards putting the safety of drug users before punishment for consuming them?